But let's go from one end of the spectrum on the defensive uh, line to the Lions, other end of the spectrum, and talk about James Houston, five snaps, two sacks. I think what was poignant uh, yesterday, I saw a quote by Dan Campbell. Spencer has it. It's up right now. Can you read it, Spencer? Yeah, it says, when you watch it with your eyes, you're like, this kid's got something. And then you have Decker and Sewell and Brown and all of the offensive linemen are like, man, when's this kid coming up? And like you said, you have two sacks and five snaps. What, uh, Terry, what part of that statement, if anything, do you take from Dan Campbell saying that? Or, But to me, when you have your offensive line who's probably gone against them a lot in practice and stuff like this sort of come out, whether it's in just, I don't think it is, but just the, like, hey, doesn't it give you a little bit more legitimacy? I, I like what he did on the field. I don't pay attention to when a coach says, man, my guys are saying, when is this guy coming up? I've heard a lot of guys – a lot of coaches said, well, my players are all talking about this game. That doesn't mean anything to me. I want to see what he does on the football field in front of 60,000 people. Because do you know when the Lions had their best practices, according to the Lions? When no one was there. When they went 0-16. Oh, okay. I thought Every I practice was great. All those players are doing fantastic things, but they couldn't beat anybody. So that's why I'm just like, I hear you, but I ain't listening. I want to see what this guy – and he, he proved it on the football field in front of 60,000 people. So that's, that matters to me. So now what about you guys, Sam? What are you, did, were you, obviously you were impressed, but it goes to also to, um, to what Neil's always said about like Brad Holmes and another late-round steal. It's just another diamond in the rough kind of late-round pick making big-time plays and big-time ga- games. Two sacks – in, in the Thanksgiving game, are you are you kidding me against the Bills? He now has more sacks this season than Kayvon Thibodeau, as I've said before, and I will continue to delight in that. And not only were those, you know, two sacks, they were two sacks in big moments. It, the, the first one was at the end of the half when Buffalo was driving down to either, either score a touchdown before half or, or kick a field goal. It was third down. James Houston sacked Josh Allen and held Buffalo to a field goal. And then the second one was right after the safety, obviously a big point in the game. I think if the Bills go down and score a touchdown at that point, game's over. The morale for the Lions is shot. But on third down, James Houston sacked Josh Allen again. So that's those are two of the biggest plays in the game made made on the defense by a six-round pick who hadn't really played all year. It's just where does Brad Holmes continue to find these these kind of guys? It's actually it's actually un- unbelievable. I know we were all super impressed with him. Jackson State, shout out Coach Prime. Coach shout Prime. Out HBCUs, mm-hmm. they put him out there. and he was, a, he was a highly touted recruit. He went to Florida. Things didn't really work out for him in Florida. He could never find his way. He transferred to Jackson State. Coach Prime got him in there, got him working. Ended up getting drafted by the Lions in the sixth round, and we, we see that explosiveness. We see that. You know what made him such a highly touted recruit to go to Florida and and the success he had at Jackson State. Now, now Terry, like you're talking about James Williams as being finding that specialist or whatever. This this could be sort of that guy on defense because the one thing is that pops out in my mind is that only five plays, right? But that's probably a scheme specific thing, like getting getting another team in in third and seven eight long yardage which you get a chance to do it is that more of the case or do you look to see him taking more snaps or is this okay to have a guy that comes in there plays six snaps and gets a sack no he must play more because if you're going to play plan on paying playing him six snaps a game there's going to be a bunch of games where he doesn't do anything uh because you have to you have to be in that rotation now if he's in that rotation uh, on the defensive line, then that's where he can become very, very dangerous. So do you expect so, – is that what you would expect? And it's, yeah, it's because one of these things because what, – what's, what's the thing the Lions need? They need depth. Right. When you get one injury, what happens? They fall apart. Except this year they've played over injuries now. But now, uh, starting next year, uh, I think Brad Holmes obviously is looking for good players. But he's got to build that depth where when uh, – when the Lions are injured, then they don't automatically lose games. And that's been the case for years and years and years with them. 
Well, it's, it's almost like we always talk about the best abilities, the availability, and the fact that they're figuring out how but to But even if you're not available, up. there's another dude that's going to come that's in. That's what, what I'm right. saying is that you're, it's, a, it's a process. You look at that offensive line, which is supposed to be you know, one of the best in the league, and they haven't been healthy all year, and still they're finding a way to pump out you know, Jamal Williams leading the league in touchdowns and, and the running game to still be effective, and they're only going to get better. Gosh. You know why? Because when I look at the Detroit Lions offensive line, I don't look at five dudes. I'm looking at eight dudes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's so what you're saying here is maybe what Houston, we see him more become one of these seven or eight dudes rotated in on right. defense. And that's the because it can only help. Yeah. Right? It can only help 